So the family is the basic building block of society. I think you've heard that a gazillion times in these episodes, in this series that I've been discussing. And uh, the interest that I have today, even in this series, is the interest of making sure that we are conscious of the fact that it is possible to raise a purpose-driven family. It's possible to build a purpose-driven family. And uh, when we do that, there are far-reaching repercussions to the generations that are going to come after that. We're coming from the analogy or, or coming from the angle where we know that the life of every human being is important and uh, it is purposeful and no one in the face of the earth is useless. And the best and safest place where we can start teaching purpose and making sure actually that purpose is deployed, it is at the front of the family because the family has far much reaching potency in the conversations and in the changing and transformation of the community and the society as compared to any other entity. So today let us look at one more way in which you can build a purpose-driven family. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Well, it's important for us to start by doing a recap on uh, what we've discussed so far in these episodes. How exactly are we going to build a purpose-driven family? That is the question that we need to answer because it is important for us to answer the how. It is easy for us to preach and say, you need to have vision, you need to have purpose, you need to do this, you need to do that. And by the way, we've had such like summons by their droves. You see people standing and, you know, haranguing you and placating you and telling you why you don't have this, why you don't have that, and you should do this, you should do that. They stop short of saying, how should I do it? Anybody can rise up and say, you need to do this, you need to do that. That's theory. I want you to show me or to tell me or to lead me in a practical step that I can be able to take, practical steps that I can take, that can make a reality that which you're preaching. So I'm talking about raising or building a purpose-driven family. Is it something that we should do? I've spent like three episodes telling you you should. But I've spent also more than three episodes telling you how you can do it. And we've said that the first thing that you need to do as a leader of the family is to be a person of purpose. Why? Because your kids or the rest of the family, the ones who are following you, quote unquote, they are hero worshippers and they're people who have the receptability. They have the receptacles of vision. They see where you're going. They see the passion that you are deploying, the whatever purpose it is that you have. And it just get into their psyche, gets into their identity. That's the first thing you need to do. The second thing, you need to download a vision for the family that you'll be known for something grander than survival as a family. And I gave you examples, things like we can build houses, we can build hospitals, we can visit the elderly, we can be a giving family, and so on and so forth. The third thing that I said you need to do is to make sure that you celebrate the uniqueness of every individual in the family because each and every person in that particular family has purpose. 
And so you don't compare and contrast people, wanting them to be the same and wanting them to follow the same channel, the same way of life. But you look at the uniqueness of every person and you celebrate it. Not only celebrate it, but you also create an environment through which that uniqueness can grow. So build an environment around it. And the fourth thing that I said that you need to do is is to make sure that you are building a value system for the family. The value is the basically the value system is the identity that you're coming up for this family, telling people that we believe in compassion, we believe in giving, we believe in integrity, we are known for those things, and so you build your lives and your actions based on those things. We believe in personal sacrifice for the betterment of the other person, especially the person that is downtrodden. The value system of your family is going to inform the actions that you're going to take as a family. The fifth way that you can be able to build a purpose-driven family that I'm going to discuss today is simply this. You involve the people of the family in the grand scheming, grand planning, grand strategizing of the vision of that particular family. The worst thing that you can do in a family is to have a an audience of one, uh, if there's such a thing, is to have yourself as the leader, the judge, the jury, and the executioner of the mandate of that family and not involve the people of the family. That is the worst thing. And this one has been done, by the way, in some settings, especially in the traditional African settings, where the male is the dominant male, has plans. I'm telling you, some wives have come back from school and they found that their husbands have already resigned them from school and they have relocated them somewhere else. They did not know that that is happening. Some kids have come back home and found that they are moving houses to another house altogether. They had no idea that that was cooking, that was happening. I mean, life is just unfolding in front of them like an adventure of sorts. You know what that does? It makes them feel powerless, feel like they don't have a stake in it. And the quicker they want to get out of that place, you know, that's that's the message that it, it sends to them. They want to get out of that place as quick as possible so they can be independent and they can do something that they are involved in it themselves. They don't feel part of the family if they're not involved in the strategies. The dreaming, by the way, the dreaming together as a family, they're talking of the things that could be, things that should be, things that must be, you talk about those things together and you plan for them together. The grand vision, they participate in the grand vision of the family and you walk together, they talk together and so on and so forth. When that happens, this vision, this purpose that you have is transmuted into the family. And again, the beauty is this, not only do the people, the young ones, buy into that vision but uh, not only do they assimilate the vision but they also start contributing and start broadening their minds around it let me tell you one of the most brilliant things you can ever do for your family especially for the young people is to give them vision is to give them purpose is to give them direction is to give them passion i'm telling you this from experience you think you know you don't once you've given a young man or a young woman vision, the how of how it's going to be actualized comes to th- comes from them. These guys are brilliant. They just need to be pointed in the right direction. Your kids are smarter than you are. Okay, of course, you are wiser than them, you're mature and so on and so forth, but they are going to always be greater than you. That is a fact. Today, I think I'm greater than my grandparent. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> He was a paramount chief, you know. He was, uh, he was a leader in his own making. Maybe not even greater than my, my dad. But I tell you that in years to come, I'm going to exceed the two of them. It is just a fact of life. It's a dead society when the kids are less and less than their parents. It's a dead society when we only look back in the distant past and we look at great souls. And today we don't have great souls. But it's supposed to be the other way around. 
we're supposed to grow from glory to glory from one generation to another generation so i'm telling you this when you involve these guys into the vision of the family into the planning together the strategizing together the dreaming together they not only get this vision put it in their system and in their psyche and in their hearts and in their spirits but they also get a wherewithal a better way of doing it a good example i can give you of course it's a for an example i'm going to give you the example of john austin if i say austin you know that particular name but some of you do not know john austin who was the vision bearer of lakewood church for decades on end and his son joel that you now know was somewhere in the obscurity of that vision serving as a guy who was doing multimedia you know recording the videos and so on and so forth and then John passes on and takes the baton to Joel and Joel expands this he's like a, I can say a hundred times better than John his father Joel Austin how did that happen it is a natural progression that when you involve these guys or involve your family in the vision or in planning and execution of your vision they are going to make it greater it goes without saying it goes the law of progression says that you're going to get better in the next generation it is something you can actually take to the bank now the problem is this the problem is that families today number one either do not have vision or purpose that they are coalescing themselves uh, against or towards or they do have and the only people that are involved in the execution of that vision are the parents and the kids have absolutely no idea of what is happening the kids are sent away to boarding school and they come back with you know different versions of life and so on and they are disconnected from the family if these kids can only be told that this is the way walking it this is what we are up to and they are actually involved and they feel part and parcel of that particular vision i guarantee you 250% they will run with this thing and they will be better than you ever thought they will be that is just the law of nature so if you wanted to raise a purpose driven family involve these guys in the plans don't be lied to by your mind that these guys are young they don't know they don't have maturity they don't understand this the other day i was watching da vinci kids with my kids and there was a program where a real estate agency was actually giving kids i'm talking kids less than 13 years of age giving them an opportunity to sell houses sell property and they will assume roles like managers and so on of course they're going to goof they're going to mess and so on but they are learning they are capturing the vision when they grow up they don't have to start from scratch the spirit is there the vision is there the commitment is there now the execution starts merging and gelling inside of their minds and now start seeing a better way of doing things than you ever thought you would but the vision at the end of the day or the purpose at the end of the day with the family is still going to be propagated so number 6 do the planning the strategizing the dreaming together tomorrow of course we come to the end of this until then bye bye thank you for listening to life signatures radio if you enjoyed today's show subscribe to life signatures radio on itunes stitcher or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com life signatures radio fresh clean and inspiring